Welcome to The Debrief, your weekly debrief of top news by the Arizona Republic and azcentral.com. I'm Rafael Carranza. This week's top story are efforts to enshrine access to abortion into the Arizona Constitution. Here are the top three things you need to know about this week. Pro-choice advocates are collecting signatures to get an initiative on the November ballot. They must get 384,000 registered voters to sign on. The deadline to submit them is the 4th of July. Organizers say they're hoping to get at least double that number. While that happens, the Arizona Supreme Court is expected to determine what the current law in Arizona is regarding access to abortion. The legislature passed the bill restricting abortions to 15 weeks in 2022, but pro-life advocates argue pre-statehood law that bans all abortions is the law of the land. Efforts by Democrats in the legislature to loosen those restrictions failed earlier this session. A state lawmaker shared her personal experience from the Senate floor, talking about why she opted to have an abortion. I don't think people should have to justify their abortions, but I'm choosing to talk about why I made this decision, because I want us to be able to have meaningful conversations about the reality of how the work that we do in this body impacts people in the real world. Generally speaking, people seek abortion for the same reason that I did. I'm choosing abortion because I'm pregnant and for reasons that I should not have to explain to you or to the church or to the state of Arizona. I need to not be pregnant anymore. A coalition of abortion rights groups are pushing to get that initiative on the November ballot. Arizona Republic reporter Stacey Barchinger and photojournalist Joel Angel Juarez visited a Tempe coffee shop that serves as a campaign's headquarters of sorts. I really try to make sure that people understand what we're doing by collecting these signatures. You're not taking a stance either way, whether you want abortion legal or not. That's Lexi Creighton, a volunteer and frequent fixture at Brick Road Coffee in Tempe. All that the signatures are doing right now is just getting it on the ballot so that every single person who can vote in Arizona has the opportunity to say whether they want it legal or not. Volunteers like her and an army of paid signature gatherers are working to put abortion rights on the ballot in November. It's an all-hands-on-deck effort that relies on creative partnerships like the one with Brick Road. I hear a lot from our customers that it's nice to have a convenient spot they can plan and know, like, you can go on the weekend and I'm likely to find a volunteer there, I'm likely to find somebody that can collect my signature. There's a few special drinks on the menu that benefit Planned Parenthood, one of the main groups backing the campaign. They are the Big O and the Morning After, so those were, those were definitely some fun drinks to come up with. Voters in seven states have cast ballots in favor of abortion access, all since the nation's top court overturned Roe v. Wade nearly two years ago. A coalition of groups hopes Arizona will come next. They see that we're providing this for the community, that we're not afraid to use our voice as a business um, and say, you know what, human rights are, are something that everybody, whether it be business or, or otherwise, needs to stand up for. Sometimes customers don't react kindly to those special drinks on the menu. But I don't let that bother me too much just because the, the community that I'm trying to create is one that's inclusive. In addition to slinging caffeine, Brick Road is a brick and mortar hub for the organizations. Volunteers are trained here and signatures get notarized here. Really a one-stop shop for people who come here. That's how Lexi, the volunteer, got started. She picked up a petition and then she took it to Christmas with her family. They were like, you know, when you reunite with family over Christmas, they're like, so what have you been up to? I'm like, actually, I have been volunteering with Planned Parenthood and I think it would be super cool if you sign this petition if you want to. <laughs> they all signed. Reporting for the briefing, I'm Stacy Barchinger with photographer Joel Angel Juarez. The battle over abortion access in Arizona has also drawn opposition. Joining me now is Cindy Dahlgren, the spokesperson for the It Goes Too Far campaign. Uh, Cindy, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Can you tell us a bit more about the campaign uh, titled It Goes Too Far? What is it about? It Goes Too Far was developed in response to misinformation that was being spread about the abortion amendment. Voters are not given the whole story. And we expect our lawmakers at the Capitol to have all the information and know the consequences of the 
bills that they'll be voting on. And likewise, voters should be given all the information. They should know the truth, and they should know the consequences of passing such a, um, such a broad and extensive amendment. Many people, several individuals for, with varying views on abortion and where it should be limited, uh, came together where we can agree, and that is that unlimited, unregulated abortion goes too far. There's a decline to sign effort that y your campaign has been uh, leading and launching. What can you tell us about that particular effort? The decline to sign effort is part of the overall it goes too far campaign. And we got into this not with our eye on July, but with our eye on November. We know that this could take up to November to uh, inform and educate voters on what they are not being told about this amendment and just how far it goes. Uh, voters should know uh, what they will be losing if this amendment passes, and they will be losing that qualified medical doctor that keeps girls and women safe and can respond to emergencies and complications. So that's what we're doing. We, are, we have hundreds of volunteers all over the state sending that message. Should the ballot initiative uh, end up in the November ballot, uh, what should voters keep in mind as they're trying to determine whether to support the initiative or not? Well, they should keep in mind that they are not given all the information. And this amendment is uh, written very vaguely with these broad exemptions. And legal analysis shows that these, uh, these uh, broad exemptions and this vague language uh, puts them in danger, puts girls and women in danger who are going for abortion. Currently, uh, abortion is legal up to 15 weeks. That's almost four months. And we have critical common sense safety standards and the oversight of a medical doctor. And it's reckless to to lose all of those safety precautions just to expand abortion beyond the current 15 weeks and beyond what most voters support. For the latest news about the status of the ballot measure, as well as the opposition to expanding abortion access, go to azcentral.com or follow us on social media. The Arizona Republic. Here for it. Are you? There's more to covering a game than covering a game. You arrive at the arena early, attend pregame press conferences for both coaches, talk to players in the locker room, work on stories, check updated injury reports, and sometimes talk to sources before the actual game even starts. Then you cover the game. This week's Sunspot is about another celestial event taking place next week. On Monday, April 8th, a solar eclipse will be visible from most of North America. Arizona is not on the path of totality, but the moon will block out about 70% of the sun's surface. The eclipse is expected to peak just past 11 a.m. If you're looking for a safe way to view this, check out these viewing events around Arizona. In Phoenix, you can visit the Arizona Science Center. In Flagstaff, you can go to Lowell Observatory. And in Tucson, you can either visit the Flandau Planetarium at the U of A campus or the Kitt Peak Observatory. Thank you for joining us on The Briefing, your weekly debrief of top news by the Arizona Republic and azcentral.com. We'll see you next time.